Okay, so at this point you've hopefully solved this equation and you have written one step for every equation to explain what you are doing. Here's what I want you to do. Now that you've each written down your steps and you have written down why you perform each step or what allows you to do that, I want you to turn and talk to people around you. I want you to first decide, did you do your steps in the same order as somebody else? Second, does it matter if you did them in the same order? Did you get the same answer? And then did you give the same reasons for why you did each step? So turn and talk to the people around you, show them what you did, tell them what they did, that sort of thing, and explain. Did it matter? Did you do it in the same order? What did you do? Okay, so raise your hand if you did the exact same steps as the people around you. Okay, raise your hand if you didn't. Okay, and back. Tell me, did it matter that you guys didn't do your steps in the same order? No. You got the same answer? Yes. Yes? Okay. Why did we do it in different orders? Explain. What happened? Uh, he divided six by both sides first, and I multiplied six by 14 and X. Okay, so Michael chose to get rid of that six out in front first, right? And you decided to distribute instead? Okay, who decided to divide by six? Chelsea did? Anybody else? Okay, anybody else decided to So not very many people. Most people, you distributed first. Doesn't matter, right? You're both getting the same answer. What did you both get for your answers? X equals four. X equals four. Did everybody get X equals four? Yes? Okay, perfect. So we all get the same answer, but they didn't do it in the same way. That's how proofs work, especially a paragraph proof. When you are writing paragraph proofs, it's not going to matter if you did one step sometimes before, somebody else did a different step, or if you wrote it in a different way, or you chose to get to your answer in a different set of processes you're still going to end up hopefully getting the right answer as long as you can defend yourself along the way. What about the steps along the way? Let's do these steps. Let's do what most people did, which was distribute. If I distributed first, what should be the next line in my statement? Somebody raise your hand. Tell me what should the next line be? Go ahead. Uh, 84 plus 6x equals 108. Okay, is that what most people had next? Raise your hand if that's what you and you, people around you had for your second step. Okay, great. So then third step. Somebody tell me what did we do after that? Go ahead, Bon. Uh, we got 6x. Okay, we got 6x equals 24. Raise your hand if, you, oops, if you're at 6x equals 24. Okay, great. So almost everybody again. All right, and then what should be my last step? X equals 4. X equals 4. So that's what most people's steps look like, unless you decided to divide first. That's what most people's steps look like, yeah? Okay, now, when you were talking to your partner, did you have the same justifications, the same reasons? Raise your hand if you had the exact same reasons. Okay, raise your hand if your reasons were slightly different. Okay, so I'm gonna go to this back set with Kitty, just because you guys have some different reasons. Which, where did you guys have different reasons at? Okay, so you had a little more detail than what she had, but you both talked about division, right? Okay, what about this first step? 
I think Caleb already told me. So Caleb, I'm gonna let you tell me again. What was your reasoning for getting to this first step? Uh, multiply six by fourteen and six by x. Okay, so Caleb wrote multiply six by fourteen and six by x. Did everybody put that? What did you put? Okay, you said order of operations. Somebody else that didn't put either of those. What did you put? Maya? Distribute the six. Distribute the six. Do those all kind of tell you the same thing? Yeah? Do some have more detail than others? Which one do you think is the most proper math vocab? Distribute. distribute. Yeah, I like that. So we're going to put we should distribute. And I like that we're giving lots of detail with distribute the six. So we know exactly what we're distributing. All right, so then. Can you tell me the back of the next step? What, oh wait, no, I'm sorry, we gotta get to this step. What do we do to get from 84 plus 6x equals 108 to 6x equals 24? Subtract the 84 on both sides. Anybody not put subtraction? Good, we could have put adding the inverse, right? Because adding the inverse is subtracting. That would work as well. Either of those are proper. I'm gonna go with what most people put, so we're gonna do subtract. 84 from both sides. And then that last step that Kitty was talking about to go from 6x equals 24 to x equals 4. What do you think is the most proper? Turn to your partner. Tell them what you think is the most proper now that we've done it. The most proper definition or explanation or justification would be. What do you think is the best way to write this last step? Turn to your partner and tell them. All right, Josiah, what did you guys decide? Um, I said divide 6x and 24 by 6 to find the value of x. Good. So divide both sides by 6. <coughs> do you understand how it's okay to say things in a different format sometimes? Or to maybe do something in a different order? Because those people that divided the 6 first, you still probably have a reason, a justification that says divide by 6, right? It's just with a different step in the process because of the way you chose to do it. But we all get to the same right answer, but there's more than one way to get there. When we write proof, that same thing is going to happen. So we're going to figure out what a proof entails, and we're going to figure